This is Steven Diego, and you are tuned in to Breaking Down the Breakdown. On today's episode, we are going to talk about social anxieties. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Breaking Down the Breakdown. It's so funny. Like, I just realized, like, in my intros, and, like, when I'm talking, like, by myself, my voice tends to get, like, a lot deeper. <laughs> like, I'm trying to bring it back up right now. Like, I'm trying to bring it to, like normal steven voice anyway hi guys welcome to another episode of breaking down the breakdown if you guys are listening through your podcast stuff hello too bad you can't see how messy my hair is right now to the people who are watching this right now lol it's locked down here in toronto no one's available to cut hair forgive me now we're gonna get right to it oh i do have to explain i do not have any guests for today um, I am also not going live on Facebook because I just kind of don't want to get distracted. I know that for me, at least in my guess, it's really fun doing it live, especially with the random questions we get or the random greetings that we get. But for this topic, I actually kind of want to keep it low key to myself, you know, because <laughs> I haven't done this in a long time where it's just by myself. Right? I did start this on my own, but, you know, kind of. <laughs> Let's get my mojo back first, and then we'll see what's up. But today's episode, we are going to talk about social anxiety. Unfortunately, I know that nowadays, this is not a foreign thing. Um, I say unfortunately because as somebody who recently started suffering from this, I really don't want anybody else going through it, right? But... It just goes to show that, you know, this is considered a mental health disorder, having social anxiety. And before COVID lockdowns happened, I can bet you uh, $57.99 that most of us never had this. And when people had it and we got, you know... I don't want to say exposed, but like we interacted with somebody who had it. For the majority of us who never had it, looked at them like, what's wrong with you? I mean, that goes for almost every single thing, right? I mean, with depression, I feel like a lot of people are a bit more understanding of that because they do believe and they do know that that could lead to you know, suicides and like uh, other things, right? So a lot of people are a bit more touchy about that. But when people start talking about social anxiety, they don't get it. They start thinking, you know, they're just an introvert (laughs) or they're just shy or, you know, they just don't like people. How many, when we were growing up, let's say, how many, okay, maybe it's different here in canada but in the philippines i grew up in the philippines and there would always be one house in a neighborhood where people would make up stories of a person living there and this person is somehow a monster like not a monster like you know like like in western media where the monster like kidnaps people and you know what i mean i mean it's close to it they think of them as like creatures right like horrific figures they're called aswan in tagalog they're like you know vampires but they eat people kind of deal it's like a vampire cannibal mix okay i got okay my point is (laughs) unfortunately as children growing up we were taught that anybody who lived on their own did not like going out in public did not like to be seen in public did not like social interactions anybody who's like that are monsters or they're hiding some deep dark secret and we carry this on growing up you know into adulthood that when we start to as adults you know when the imagination kind of has worn off a little bit ow (laughs) sorry i hit my mic Um, as adults when we now interact with these people, we start to think they're weird. We start to think like, ugh, like, you know, almost as if like, well, they're clearly not monsters. So what the fuck is their excuse? Why don't they just go out 
why don't you just face people it's not that hard say hi you know and unfortunately just the world is not that compassionate right like we're not we're just not that understanding but you know with that being said for those of you who has you know done that for those of you who are guilty of passing judgment like that i'm guilty of that i'm not gonna lie i've said it many times before like my childhood is weird i'm not here to talk about my childhood my teenage years you know like it's weird and i'm talking about i've been through things so you know (laughs) anyway my point is i don't want you guys to feel guilty for having thought of somebody that way right what's important is to now kind of educate ourselves as to why people are like this and this is the perfect time for it why is this the perfect time for it well because you yourself might be experiencing social anxiety now it can take on a lot of forms um i had a friend who talked to me about this briefly and this friend of mine you know he's fine like he's i don't that sounds so wrong like he's fine in the sense that people would perceive him as normal right but there was one time where he didn't leave his house for i believe a week or two that when he stepped out of his house he started seeing people and started thinking in his head why are they staring at me (laughs) why are they looking at me like that do they have a problem with me like i don't know them you know he was very agitated and how many of us experience this during lockdown when we would you know eventually go out to the grocery stores or go on our walks all of a sudden our mind starts thinking like are they staring at me what the fuck do they want and you start to feel like you're angry you know and with what i started this whole podcast with intrusive thoughts right that's all it is right but it's so hard it's so hard to label it as such when it's so foreign to you especially for me you know like uh, people like me like i'm a social butterfly i love parties like before this whole thing i used to be drunk every weekend you know i'm glad i don't do that anymore but you know i love people i thrive being around people so you know you can just imagine you all of a sudden have to cut yourself off from society you know there are some people who are faring better than most of us who are social right people who likes being alone people who you know are are actual introverts who needs minimal contact with the outside world right but even they are starting to complain that you know it just feels unnatural and it's becoming lonely for them so it does take its toll on us differently but my point is majority of us are now currently going through social anxieties i wanted to talk about this because i want people to understand that a they're not alone i'm pretty sure you all know that you guys are not alone you're everyone's going through this together right but b there are ways that you can i don't want to say combat it because when you fight something like mentally it just comes back 30 times stronger that's always been the rule right my therapist says this thing and i I, you know like i'm sure it's a quote everybody's heard before whatever you resist must persist right and it's one of those things where we can't fight the anxieties right regardless of whether it's social anxiety or any other anxiety you have you can't fight it you're tempted to fight it because you feel like it's not you right you're tempted to be like fuck no like i don't want to think that way that's i I don't think like that that's not me but that was my first mistake with my ocd and like the whole psychosis thing right like that was my first mistake you know leading up to me ending up in the mental health unit i start i had conversations with myself I always have conversations with myself, but not to that point. But 
I would sit down and overthink what I just thought about. You know, there are 10,000 thoughts that comes into a person's mind every day. Why am I so fixated on one thing? And even then, you know, I start asking why. And then I'm like, oh my God, if I'm fixated on this, it must mean something. And then it's a snowball effect, right? And then I just didn't want to leave my room and interact with my friends. You know, and for a lot of you who are experiencing that and you can still go out, you're a bit uncomfortable about it, but you still go out, kudos to you. I am proud because that's exactly what you need to do, right? Um, I really wanted to bring this to light because I've been noticing on my feeds, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, people have started posting up stuff that I'm just kind of like, I don't want to say I'm like too concerned about it where I'm going to go call like a helpline or whatever, right? But you see it taking its toll. It's not easy. It never is. And I, I understand that, right? But what can we do? Because we have to understand that we got to take care of ourselves first as well, right? In order to be able to help other people. Right, that's one thing that I learned to do lately, because I would always just want to help other people out and I would always be running on empty. That I end up actually not helping people out because I'm just really cranky or like I'd give such shitty advice, you know, or like I just I just be like, Oh my god, you're so annoying, but like, but continue venting and it's like wow, that's not how I want this to go, right? There is a th- um <laughs> so my point was, sorry. I feel like a lot of people don't know what cognitive behavioral therapy actually does. Now, I usually go by the term, by the acronym, <laughs> but I made my mistake before because I told somebody, there, somebody asked me, like, how are you dealing with all of this stuff, all the changes and with your OCD and your intrusive thoughts and all that stuff? And I'm like, oh, I, use, I, I do CBT. And they're like, how does that help? And I'm like, what do you mean, how does it help? Like, it really stimulates you. (laughs) And they were like, no shit, it stimulates you. That's cock and ball torture. And I'm like, wait a minute. That is not what I'm talking about. It is not cock and ball torture, guys. Oh my goodness. (laughs) If that's your thing, I mean, hey. Go go ahead. I, I'm not stopping you, you know, like, hey, everybody got their cakes and I think that's cool, you know, but we are talking about cognitive behavioral therapy over here. OK, Um, you see, the thing with <laughs> the thing with cognitive behavioral, I, do I really have to say the whole thing now just because I feel like everyone's going to feel like cock and ball torture, cock and ball torture. Um, The thing is, it kind of. The purpose, at least for me, I find that the purpose of it is to ground me. And by that, I mean, it allows me to really think clearly. And by think clearly, it allows me to know that the thoughts I'm having that are bringing the anxieties towards me are just negative thoughts and they're automatic thoughts. That's it. You know, they're. They, like what I said, 10,000 thoughts come into a person's mind every day. And that's just one of them. And, you know, being able to understand that actually takes a lot of work and takes time. It took me how many months to get to this point now? I, you know, I will always suffer from OCD. But look at how I'm dealing with it now. I don't know if you guys started listening to me when i first you know did this whole thing last season right you could hear the fear in my voice when i talk about it you can fe- you can hear the worry the sadness you know that that i was just trying to be strong but now i'm at the point where i'm starting to accept that hey this is it you know this is gonna be my life i am going to always have ocd and that's that but now i'm on stage two where I don't want this to stop me from living my life. 
because that's one of the things that OCD does for me is give me social anxiety. Granted, I still only work twice a week right now because it gets overwhelming. Um, even though you know, like it's suggested that I, oh, I you know work a lot more when I start to feel comfortable about it. That's why you know I used to work twice a week, four hours each. Now I'm getting close to doing like seven, eight hours each day, which is you know a marked improvement. And I would say that because. People will sit down and tell you you only added an hour each day, and it's like I'm sorry, this is my struggle, not yours. I am proud of where I've, you know, kind of come from and where I am now. So you know, let's leave it at that, right? All I'm saying is, CBT helped me get to this point. There is one that I always do. Which is a thought challenging record. If you guys have, you know, Google, <laughs> um, or any other search engines that you use, because I know I heard Google's not very safe anymore. Um, I think you guys should look into it because it's actually very helpful. It took me months to master everything that I'm writing down to really understand what I'm trying to tell myself. And now I don't even really need to do it. I do it like once a week, once every two weeks,、um, and I don't do it when my social anxiety kicks in. Funny enough, it wants me to. You know, it's a, it becomes a coping mechanism, right? The compulsion, right? You're just kind of like you think of something bad. You're like,、oh, I need to write this down. You, you know, you can write it down, yeah. You know, but I tend to wait. I allow myself to really just sit down and be like. I'm just having, you know, an anxiety attack. I'll deal with this later when I'm good again, because immediately what I think about is, oh my god! But if I do it later, not now, I'm gonna have to think about it again, and it's gonna bring up my anxiety again. But even that kind of thinking, right? It's a negative thinking style. That's catastrophizing. You know, that's how do I know this? I'm not a mind reader, like I'm not a psychic. I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, right? Like, I'm jumping to conclusions. Hello, like, how do I know that if I start writing this down, I'm gonna think about it in the way I'm thinking about it right now, right? So there's ways that CBT allows you to really ground yourself. So you know, like, I don't suggest that. When you do have it, like let's say you're new to this thing, I don't suggest that when you do have it, you don't write your stuff down. I say write it down. That's what got me through it first, right? I I wrote things down. Whenever I would be feeling these weird things or have these weird thoughts, I would write them down. And you know, it's funny because the f- that fear feeling when you write things down, and when you look at the paper, what you just wrote, that what your thoughts are. You know, it makes you get so emotional, kind of like fuck. You know, like I don't want to think like this, and th- this won't click for a while. It won't click for maybe a few weeks. If you know, if you're really good with your mind, kudos. Maybe a few days, right? But you'll start to understand once you're writing it down. You start to get scared. You start to maybe cry a little, or whatever. You're kind of like, wait a minute. Why am I feeling like this? Why am I so scared of these thoughts? Right? Well. Number one is because you know that that's not actually something you want to do, and that is kind of the anchor that you're looking for when you're doing these things. When you start to realize, oh my God, my thoughts are not me. Right? It's ego dystonic. It is the complete opposite of what I like, what I want to do, what I'm. You know, I don't want to say capable of. Everyone's capable of anything. That's one truth, right? But you don't want to, <laughs> you know. And that's kind of the biggest thing there. It's not you. It's so unnatural, and that's why you're feeling anxious. So you know, take that with a grain of salt. I make it sound so easy. It is actually very hard. But you just keep doing that work and. 
it's amazing you know i do suggest that you see a psychotherapist okay psychotherapy is amazing now they can't prescribe you medication but look at it this way if you are willing to put in the work you're not going to need medication some people actually they need they need it right so you know if you feel like you need it go right ahead i'm just saying like from my personal experience when i when i was on meds and i know it affects everyone differently right like i know that feeling of you're kind of numb and the good thing about that is you kind of need to be numb in order to process through certain things but my personality is not like that i'm not that kind of person like i want to feel something because if i'm numb i'm scared i'm not going to care about things and then that sends me into a worse frenzy than i ever had right so you know meds are not for me aside from the fact i'm allergic to them but you know all i'm trying to say is if you're looking for a way to kind of manage your social anxiety if it's not too bad yet you know i say you look into talking to a psychotherapist doing some cognitive behavioral therapy you can also do it on your own you know there's so there are so many tools online that pertains to cognitive behavioral therapy study it you know read it make sure that you understand what you're about to do if you are planning on doing it it's a nice little brain exercise it's very refreshing you know it and you find yourself being able to do it without needing the paper anymore without needing your pen and paper later on i can do it when i wake up now because i do have days where i would today actually is one of those days i woke up and my negative thoughts were like a flood because i had a bad dream and normally what i would do is i would go and write it down i'd be like okay you know what it's just a dream whatever but no i i laid down there and i was like okay well i'm gonna get up for the day and i'm gonna allow my thoughts to just kind of run through i'm gonna allow myself to feel a little anxious but guess what i'm gonna go downstairs and you know hopefully my roommates are around so i can be around people even though my body's telling me i fucking hate people right now i'm gonna go punch a person Mm. (laughs) i'm gonna go punch myself why didn't i do that yet you know (laughs) it's one of those things like (laughs) that's another way actually of dealing with your anxieties and you know a few psychotherapists have spoken about if you have intrusive thoughts that are scary kind of say it back in a funny way or like make humor out of it it actually works especially if you're not too deep into that social anxiety things yet like if it's not too bad for you yet you're gonna end up laughing at it and be like holy fuck this is so ridiculous but whatever and you know you find yourself kind of moving on anyway sorry went on a little tangent there who had to drink i was talking for so much but anyways so i hope what i kind of gave you guys sort of helps you if you are experiencing social anxieties right and i think it's important to remember that it's not just you anymore that's dealing with that right now right for majority of us who've dealt with it before covid even happened it might have gotten a lot worse and if you're one of these people, you know, keep doing what you're doing, right? Keep seeing your therapist. If you don't have one, go get one, right? Like, I say it like it's cheap. It's really not cheap. But even if you see them once a month, once every two months, have an agenda for why you want to see them. Allow yourself to tell them what's going on with you. You know, if you suspect it's social anxiety, tell them. The worst thing you can do is self-diagnose and then, you know, kind of like heal yourself on your own, right? Like, I mean, you can say like, I think I might have social anxieties because the A, B, C, D, and E, right? And then your psychotherapist is going to walk you through it and be like, okay, well, you know, yada, yada, yada. The worst thing that's going to happen 
in psychotherapy. And I hope you guys are ready for this. The worst thing is you're going to lose money. <laughs> you know, that's it. There literally, like, there is nothing negative that can come out of it. So I say, guys, if you are feeling a little bit of a social anxiety brewing, or if you're already in it, go and see a psychotherapist. Now, with that being said, if you can't afford one, right? Taking the shame and the guilt you know and this is a shout out to my book club by the way because we are reading this book called um gifts of imperfection by Brene brown it's been a great read so far but it's funny because when i read it that's exactly what i have to do with myself it tells you to take away the guilt and the shame of the things that you know you you're afraid of or whatever whatever you're doing that you feel is like oh my god like people are gonna judge me you gotta take that away because that only adds to your anxieties right so back on track if you yourself can't afford therapy a lot of us can't right now i actually cut back my therapy from once a week yeah i'm spoiled once a week now that i'm not covered by my company I have to shell out tons of cash to once a month. I was scared at first. Scaling back, I was scared, terrified. But within that same aspect, I realized I started using my therapy as a compulsive behavior that I feel like if I don't have therapy this week, I'm going to fall apart. Again, like what I said earlier, that's an unhelpful thinking style, right? That's negative thinking styles. I am catastrophizing things. I am disqualifying the positive. The positive being, I have been in therapy once a week for a few months. If I scale back to once a month, the positive thing about it is I can handle it. Because I have all of the tools that I need to help me get through the day. Right? But it's easy for us to disqualify anything positive when the negative thoughts just take over and brings us to this place of fear and uncertainty or rather certainty and i do that with a quote i said that with a quote for you listeners who do not have me on your videos certainties things that you feel like you're so sure it's about to happen you can never be sure of what's about to happen right you're not psychic we can have intuition right i'm not taking that away there's moments where we're very intuitive to things but majority of the time if you actually sit back and you know logicize things is that a word <laughs> can i just say rationalize things um you're gonna un realize that wait a minute I have no actual hard evidence that shows my anxieties are telling me something's about to happen that's bad. Like, it, that, that don't work that way. It just doesn't, right? When you have your social anxieties and, you know, like, you're afraid that once you step out of this door, let's say somebody's gonna yell at you at, or, like, you're going to get embarrassed because you're going to miss the bus. That sounds so ridiculous, right? But it's really not ridiculous for people who have severe social anxieties. Look at it this way. Somebody who's afraid of that happening, there's a lot of whys, right? If they miss the bus, they don't just miss the bus. They could think, if I'm standing there and I miss the bus, everybody on that bus is going to laugh at me. Everybody on the street who saw me miss the bus is going to laugh at me. Everyone is going to think I'm stupid for missing the bus. If I'm late for work because I missed the bus, I'm going to get to work and tell them I missed the bus. Then they're going to laugh at me for missing the bus. Then get mad at me for being late for work. It piles on and on and on and on. That's just one example of how social anxiety 
can affect a person right but trying to paint that picture this is where cognitive behavioral therapy really does kick in and help because it allows you to take a step back from that specific everyone's laughing at me thought into saying to yourself how do i know they're laughing at me did i trip missing the bus did i do something silly missing the bus you know even if you run and you miss the bus why can't you think they're gonna feel bad for me because i tried to make it for the bus and i didn't make it and there's instances where you know you've been on a bus and you see somebody miss it and some people on the bus you always stop that person's trying to run for it right and it's because it's so much easier to think of the negative things that makes us feel that shame that makes us feel that weird feeling where your body starts to go cold and just kind of like fuck like I'm, I'm shaking and i'm like this is too embarrassing i can't be here or i'm too scared social anxiety for you right and like what i said it's different for everybody it's different um in the ways it manifests itself but at the end of the day the end product that it wants for all of us is for us to shut the world out for us to stay in our rooms and be afraid of the entire world and that's the dangers of social anxiety it leads to something else it changes who we are but it doesn't need to be that way is what i'm trying to get at it'll be it'll take like you know tons and tons and tons of like negativity for us to even be rewired like that right but even then guess what it is never too late because you can actually rewire your brain without having to undergo surgery and it's one of the best things about having a brain it's the, one of the best things about our brain we can rewire it if we feel like something's up you know and there's that anyway i have gone on for too long i did not expect it to be this long as well <laughs> i'm so sorry guys i just feel like a lot of us are suffering from social anxieties and you know it's time to just help each other out let's you know let's remind each other that this isn't who we are when we start to feel these anxieties but we'll respect our boundaries we'll respect our space until we're okay again let's remind each other that there are no closed doors or windows for anyone right we're always going to be there for each other if we really need it. Let's keep practicing being compassionate towards one another to help us get through this. I don't know where you're listening from, whether you're from Canada, the US, Korea, Japan, you know, Europe. I mean, hey, we're all human. And we are all experiencing this right now. Maybe not the ones who, like, you know, don't really have COVID anymore. Um, even then, right? Um, even before COVID happened, there are people who were just wired like this. Let's take this experience and turn it into something that we can help other people with. Because there are a lot of us who can get through experiences like this and come out stronger and then there are some of us who goes through an experience like this and falls apart and hey that's okay we're not all the same right we're built different but for those of us who don't fall apart let's help the people pick themselves back up and remind them that hey that didn't need to happen but it's okay that it did just a little kindness guys anyways thank you for listening to my rant next episode i really am trying to get my friend to 
speak about fitness and mental health because he is the perfect example for that. I know I said it was going to be this episode, but, you know, things happen, right? He has midterms and, you know, still on lockdown. But, you know, I really hope that this episode today just kind of leads up. To, it, it is going to lead up to, to to fitness, right? But I really hope that you guys kind of took away something from today. Whether it be the not cock and ball torture or just being kind to other people but most importantly guys being kind to yourselves it's okay and always remind yourself of that this has been breaking down the breakdown with me steven diego now if you guys want to get on the show have any questions for me you know just email me steven diego that's s-t-e-p-h-e-n-d-i-e-g-o at hotmail.com and i'll get back to you i think i might have miss some emails because it might have went to my junk oh my god i think i should check that maybe that's why no one's emailing (laughs) or maybe people just don't listen i don't know anyways thank you so much guys and i hope you guys have a great day a great night wherever you are and keep tuning in and remember if you guys want to talk about something i don't care who you are you don't gotta be famous you can be somebody i don't even know but if you feel like getting on this show and allowing yourself to just vent and let everything out is going to help you. Reach out. I would be more than willing to help. See you guys.